जय राधा माथा जय कुंज बिहारे जय गोपी जाना वल्ला जय गिरिवार गोपी जाना वल्लाभ जय गिरिवार धारे जय अशोधानंदना ब्रज जन रंजन यशोदानंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यमुना तीरा वन चार वन चारे हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna. Jaya Prabhupada, 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 Jaya Prabhupada. Shishi Radha Madha Vashti Sakhi ki jai. Shishi Narsingh Dev Pralad Maharaj ki jai. Shishi Panchatattva Bhagavan ki jai, Shila Prabhupada ki jai, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, my obeisances to all the devotees. Today we shall be reading from Canto 8, chapter number 10, titled The Battle Between the Demigods and Demons. And we shall be reciting together text number 40 although the section that I'm asked to cover is from text 39 to 57 so text number 40 Kapandha Tatra Cho Utpetu Patita Swa Shiro Akshibhihi Udyata Ayutha Dordande Adhavanta Bhatan Mrithe Kapandhas Tatra Chodpetu Patita swa shiro akshi pihi Utyata ayutha tor dandir Adha vanto patan rithe Kabandhas tatra chot petu Patitsva shiro akshibhihi Utyata ayutha tor dandir Adhavanto patan rithe Kapandhas tatra chot petuhu Patitsva shiro akshibhihi Utyata ayutha tor tande Adhavanto pratan ridhe
Mataji's ladies. Kabandaha trunks, bodies without heads. Tatra there on the battlefield. Cha also. Utpetuhu generated. Patita fallen. Swashiraha akshibhi. Swashiraha Akshibhi by the eyes in one's head. Utyata raised. Ayudha equipped with weapons. Dor Dandehe the arms of whom? Adhavantaha rushing toward Bhatan the soldiers Mridhe on the battlefield Translation purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada Srila Prabhupada Ki Chai Translation Many headless trunks were generated on that battlefield with weapons in their arms those ghostly trunks which could see with the eyes in the fallen heads attacked the enemy soldiers. Papot. It appears that the heroes who died on the battlefield immediately became ghosts and although their heads had been severed from their bodies new trunks were generated. And these new trunks seeing with the eyes in the severed heads began to attack the enemy. In other words, many ghosts were generated to join the fight. And thus new trunks appeared on the battlefield. <laughs> Shri Guru Dina Tarene Oma Jnana Timirandasya Jnana Jana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Elamaha Hare Krishna So this is a fierce section of the Bhagavatam where a fierce battle is going on and today because we have to cover from verse number 39 to 57 what we'll try to do together is to first go through the complete section of the verses along with the translations primarily before we begin reciting the verses or the translations which I shall recite for you I like to set the context again so we are in the 8th canto. The chapter now is battle between the demigods and demons. What has just happened in the last chapter is the pot of nectar was stolen away 
from the demons and given by the lordship to the devatas and having been mistreated like this in their view they felt cheated they felt very angry and they saw the jubilation amongst the devatas and out of that anger and envy they start to they start another battle another battle so currently we are in the section of the second battle within the eighth canto one battle happened previously now the second battle is going on and another one will come after a few chapters so as you must have heard already we heard from chananivas prabhu we heard from ikshvaku prabhu and also keshavi mataji they actually started reciting this very very fierce verses and we in the middle of those fierce verses extremely ghastly and in the text number 5th of this chapter there is a word used the word uses roma harshana the literal translation there says that how the fighting was so terrible that simply hearing about it would make the hair on one's body stand on end roma harshana stand on end so uh, while we may not be able to bring all the audio visual effects in this recitation but let's just see just by simply hearing bhagavatam as it is from verse number 39 to 57 do our hair really stand at end or not verse number 40 as one of the devotees said is far out the one that we just recited the translation so i'll start with 39 and i'll go through the translations in the interest of time in the course of the battle the war field became strewn with the severed heads of heroes their eyes still staring and their teeth still pressed against their lips in anger helmets and earrings were scattered from their severed heads similarly many arms decorated with ornaments and clutching various weapons were striven here and there as were many legs and thighs which resembled the trunks of elephants so clearly this section is not for the faint hearted if you have any apathy towards blood etc this is fierce text 40 i repeat again many headless trunks were generated on that battlefield with weapons in their arms those ghostly trunks which could see with the eyes in the fallen heads attacked the enemy soldiers and prabhupad described that these are ghostly forms 41 maharaj bali then attacked indra with 10 arrows and attacked airavata indra's carrier elephant with three arrows with four arrows he attacked the four horsemen guarding airavata's legs and with one arrow he attacked the driver of the elephant purport the word vahana refers to the soldiers on horseback who protected the legs of the carrier elephants according to the system of military arrangement the legs of the elephant bearing the commander were also protected before bali maharaj's arrows could reach him indra king of heaven who is expert in dealing with arrows smiled and counteracted the arrows with arrows of another type known as bhala which were extremely sharp when bali maharaj saw the expert military activities of indra he could not restrain his anger thus he took up another weapon known as shakti which blazed like a great fire brand but indra cut that weapon to pieces while it was still in bali's hand 
and you can imagine how that must have made bali feel he did not even release the weapon and indra very expertly just cut the weapon in his hand and we can notice as the verses progress the anger is increasing thereafter one by one bali maharaj used a lance prasa tomara rishtis and other weapons but whatever weapons he took up indra immediately cut them to pieces my dear king bali maharaj then disappeared and resorted to demoniac illusions a giant mountain generated from illusion then appeared above the heads of the demigod soldiers from that mountain fell trees blazing in a forest fire chips of stone the sharp edges like picks also fell and smashed the heads of the demigod soldiers so while the word illusion is used it doesn't mean like the magic and illusion we see where there is no effect it's only an optical illusion rather here it's fairly clear that there were people who were dying it wasn't just an optical illusion this was a different kind of an illusion scorpions large snakes and many other poisonous animals as well as lions tigers boars and great elephants all began falling upon the demigod soldiers crushing everything oh my king many hundreds of male and female carnivorous demons completely naked and carrying tridents in their hands then appeared crying the slogans cut them to pieces pierce them fierce clouds harassed by strong winds then appeared in the sky rumbling very gravely with the sound of thunder they began to shower live coals live coals here refers to embers burning coal burning coal a great devastating fire created by bali maharaj began burning all the soldiers of the demigods this fire accompanied by blasting winds seemed as terrible as the samvartaka fire which appears at the time of dissolution thereafter whirlpools and sea waves agitated by fierce blasts of wind appeared everywhere before everyone's vision in a furious flood it's evident that practically all elements of nature were being utilized expertly by the demons headed by bali maharaj to cause this attack upon the devatas while this magical atmosphere in the fight was being created by the invisible demons who were expert in such illusions the soldiers of the demigods became morose o king now is the turning point an important and a very significant turning point because when we'll discuss the verse i'll highlight that this happens to be the main purpose o king when the demigods could find no way to counteract the activities of the demons they wholeheartedly meditated upon the supreme personality of godhead the creator of the universe who then immediately appeared the supreme personality of godhead whose eyes resemble the petals of a newly blossomed lotus sat on the back of garuda spreading his lotus feet over garuda's shoulders dressed in yellow decorated by the kastuba gem and the goddess of fortune and wearing an invaluable helmet and earrings the supreme lord holding various weapons in his eight hands eight hands became visible to the demigods as the dangers of a dream cease when the dreamer awakens 
the illusions created by the jugglery of the demons were vanquished by the transcendental prowess of the supreme personality of godhead as soon as he entered the battlefield indeed simply by remembrance of the supreme personality of godhead one becomes free from all dangers o king when the demon kala nemi who was carried by a lion saw that the supreme personality of godhead carried by garuda was on the battlefield the demon immediately took his trident whirled it and discharged it at garuda's head the supreme personality of godhead hari the master of the three worlds immediately caught the trident and with the very same weapon he killed the enemy kalanemi along with his carrier the lion purport in this regard shila madhvacharya says kalanemi adaya sarve karina nihata api shukreno jivita santah punaste neva patitah kalanemi and all the other demons were killed by the supreme personality of god at hari and when shukracharya their spiritual master brought them back to life they were again killed by the supreme personality of godhead thereafter two very powerful demons named mali and sumali were killed by the supreme lord who severed their heads with his disc then malyavan another demon attacked the lord with his sharp club the demon who was roaring like a lion attacked garuda the lord of the birds who are born from eggs but the supreme personality of godhead the original person used his disc to cut off the head of that enemy also thus end the bhakti vedanta purports of the 8th canto 10th chapter of the shrimad bhagavatam entitled the battle between the demigods and demons often in the matter of preaching or when you talk to some people a question arises that is why is there so much blood shed battle mentioned in the scriptures should they not be talking about peaceful demeanor why is there so much battle often people criticize even the bhagavad gita by saying oh krishna encourage arjuna to fight this fighting between the good and the evil has been going on eternally for a very very long time this particular chapter is even titled the battle between the demigods and the demons here of course we understand the demons represent the evil and the demigods represent the good as i mentioned previously these fierce battles are mentioned in many many occasions in the 8th canto itself there are three battles described then if you go little bit backwards you see the 4th canto and i am only picking on the battles which are of a similar nature and fierceness that is described in this section of bhagavatam you would recall such pictures appeared in the mind and on this battlefield when there was daksha yagya when the soldiers who were supporting lord shiva came to the bat, to the yagya and very fierce subsequently in the same canto we also witness the battle that dhruva carried out against the yakshas again extremely fierce extremely fierce and then there is the most famous battle of kurukshetra again very fierce right so when somebody claims there are so many battles etc it's a natural question why is there so many battles well we witness battles everywhere you, we are witnessing now in shrimad bhagavatam an interplanetary battle there are residents of different planetary systems and they're fighting amongst each other interplanetary then we know there are battles which are intraplanetary on the same planet between countries you heard of fights 
within countries. We've heard of fights within states, within a state, between states. We've heard of fights and battles within a town and village. And if you know where I'm heading to, we've heard of battles within family, fights, disagreements between family members. And of course, there is also a battle that we all have within ourselves. Within ourselves also, we're going through a battle. So all of these battles that are happening, how are they at all relevant? How are they relevant to devotees of Krishna who are seeking a very, very peaceful attitude? Is a question that we'll try to address today. Is it at all relevant? Well, one way to address it is that yes, devotees, practicing devotees specifically, are not devoid of battles. We ourselves have our struggles, reversals, situations, disagreements, and you, we don't have to look too far. Everywhere we find that, within our own family, within our own self, within our own family, within our community, we find that it does exist, so it is relevant. Now, why do they arise? In order to understand this whole concept of battle, why do they really arise? For this, His Divine Grace Srila Prabhupada has helped us understand this right at the beginning of this chapter. Right at the upfront, he states, he says, because of envy, the fight between the demons and the demigods continued. Because of envy. And as long as we have envy, this is valid for all of us as well who are practicing devotees. Amongst practicing devotees, they arise whenever we are not being nourished properly by our practice of Krishna consciousness. If we were to reflect within ourselves, we will observe typically these troubles which cause us despair arise when we are not getting adequate nourishment from the practice of Krishna consciousness. That's when we get into despair. We get into a mentality of fault finding amongst others when we're not practicing ourselves properly. Because then that envy which we've not been able to extricate completely starts to come to surface. I personally witnessed this and not very far back, just three days back, I witnessed a similar situation. Sometimes in the matter of service, I have certain services which do not allow me to take shelter of Bhagavatam regularly. And I was at a receiving end of such a disagreement, a fairly vicious one, very disturbing. And I was getting into despair, very disturbed. And thankfully, by the mercy of Sri Panchatattva, on that very day, I received a call from His Grace Pada Padma Prabhu and he said, would you like to do the service for Bhagavatam three days from now? And the moment I picked up Bhagavatam and the section that I had to deliver, Srila Prabhupada very kindly just opened it all up. It opened it all up. So I wasn't trying to claim that I am the Devata, the good one, or the other person is the bad one. It doesn't really matter. What really matters is that my personal shelter of Bhagavatam was getting distance. And by this kind reminder, I was able to engage in the service of Bhagavatam and quickly, magically enough, just by taking shelter of Bhagavatam, once again, the despair was dispelled. And I felt encouraged. So I'm really thankful for this service. Now when these unpleasant situations do arise, and I'm moving from battle to unpleasant situations, because in the lives of devotees we're not necessarily throwing arrows at each other, nuclear weapons, hopefully not even slapping each other. I mean, there is no dwanda, none of that. But unpleasant, is there any merit in these unpleasant situations? 
if you were to look at bigger unpleasant situations uh, lord krishna says he appears paritranaya sadhuna vinashaya ch duskritam dharma samsthapanarthaya sambhavami yuge yuge he explains he will come then he also explains in bhagavatam etacham shakalapum sa krishna stu bhagwan swayam indrari vyakulam lokam mridayanti yuge he will appear so one is that yes when these unpleasant situations arise there is a possibility of krishna to appear there is a possibility krishna will appear in the lives of devotees when we were to the merit that we have in studying about these topics from shrimad bhagavatam and i'm going to make a proposal my proposal is and i have written it down that if we were to apply our mind and intelligence to the battles that are mentioned in shrimad bhagavatam with full krishna consciousness then it will bring an end to all battles of this world i repeat if we were to sincerely apply our mind and intelligence to study the content the context and the instruction shila prabhupad gives to the descriptions of battles that are mentioned in shrimad bhagavatam then it will bring an end to all the battles that exist in this world if you are to apply it at an individual level then our individual battles will come to an end if you were to apply it together as a family take shelter of shrimad bhagavatam and understand this section it will become evident to us how foolish we are to let our envy pride come in between and cause these battles and as prabhupad said if eventually more and more leaders of this world to actually study and take shelter of shrimad bhagavatam and the process of krishna consciousness then all battles of this world will come to an end shila prabhupad said that will be the true united nations that can be established so that's the proposal i make why because these battles give us many many instructions to progress in the process of krishna consciousness if you were to sincerely study them many many instructions on the battlefield of kurukshetra i'll take all the references that i took previously the most beautiful song of god bhagavad gita was spoken there filled with immense instructions to purify and perfect our life if then if you were to refer to the battle that happened between dhruva and the yakshas so many instructions came out and the only turning point just like here there is similarity in this battle and that there was a turning point there was a turning point at the end when the brahmanas come and they tell dhruva take shelter of the holy name of the supreme personality of godhead and they give him a hint of narayana and then dhruva remembers narayana astra and then he chants the holy name so they give instruction there are also very valuable instructions given in that section where indra describes how a three point formula if you practice three things then the whole world can become peaceful especially yourself and he gives how you should relate to devotees who are subordinate to you how you should relate to devotees who are peers and how you should relate to devotees who are superior to you a very beautiful instructions are given there similarly if you take the daksha yagya again so many instructions are given and i'll come back very quickly to what instructions we can draw from this section of the verses the second understanding that i like to share with you as to the advantage what do the battles give us they clearly demonstrate the love krishna lord krishna has for his devotees he does not he does not leave his devotees under any circumstances in some cases he even breaks his vow like he did on the battlefield of kurukshetra and in other cases he keeps his vow by appearing when his devotees really require his help he does not leave them so that i feel is another very very significant beauty that comes out of these battles let's take the example of dhruva where he had given a vow to dhruva that you will live for 36000 years and when 
Uttama was killed, his mother was killed in the forest fire. Dhruva goes to fight, he was about to be killed, but then the Lord comes to protect. And I like to share with you or ask you or impress upon you that there is a wow, there is the, a wow that the Lord is trying to fulfill even in this section of Bhagavatam. Would you like to mention what, what is that wow he's trying to fulfill? Name Bhakta Prayanashati. And which Bhakta did he give this wow to? Many, many millenniums behind, many, many millenniums back, the Lord who resides downstairs here, Lord Narsingadev, gave a wow to Prahlad Maharaj. When Prahlad was requesting, can you liberate my father? Can you please take care of my father? Lord Narsingadev said, what to say of your father, Prahlad? Many generations behind and many generations in front, I shall take care of them. And through this section, this beautiful section of this fierce fight between the king of demons called Bali Maharaj and the Devatas, the Lord will eventually come back and fulfill his vow to give shelter to Bali Maharaj. And that's the vow he's trying to fulfill. It appears fierce, you see. That's the beauty of it. It all appears very fierce. In the beginning it perplexes our mind, our hair starts at the end. And we don't know what's going to happen. Right? But it does come to that fruitful conclusion. That's why these incidents are mentioned in Bhagavatam. They have a place in Bhagavatam because the Lord is fulfilling His promise to His devotees. And this was no ordinary person, Bali Maharaj. No ordinary person. The grandson of Prahlad Maharaj, the son of Virochana. And the Lord comes. And what he performs eventually, and you will see through his conduct in the past you've seen, when he accepted, no problem, I'll churn the, the nectar with you. The demons will do it. And you'll see also in the front, he demonstrates from his conduct, he's not so envious. And then in the end, he'll perform a surrender. Not an ordinary surrender, the full surrender. Atmanivedanam for which he is glorified for eternity. So when we talk about devotees and the performance of devotional service, Bali Maharaj comes as the example for Atmanivedanam. So that is the wow that Lord is trying to fulfill here through the battles. When the reversals arise, we talked about so far in the lives of practicing bhaktas. But they also arise in the lives of pure devotees. And a question may arise, how are we supposed to witness that? How are we supposed to understand that? What is the purpose that the Lord is trying to fulfill to the lives of pure devotees? And here, we must immediately think about His Divine Grace, Srila Prabhupada. You could all recount so many tribulations that Srila Prabhupada went through. So many. Going on a freight ship. He lives with bums in a bowery. His life is threatened on few occasions. Any other tribulations that you like to point out that Prabhupada went through? From an external perspective, all the tribulations that he went through? Prabhu? Try to establish Krishna consciousness in India, yes. What other tribulations you remember from the, from Leela Mrita and the writings of other disciples? He had heart attacks. What else? heart stroke. I'm sure it's a long list. I, we can glorify, uh, through those tribulations, we can glorify Prabhupada for a long time. Long time. Went through so much. So much. But then the Lord, 
in such circumstances when the pure devotees of lord are faced with such circumstances which appear as tribulations fights battles he's trying to teach us he's trying to teach us through the example of a life of a founder acharya as to how always take full surrender and shelter in the lotus feet of krishna much like very much like bali maharaj did very different circumstances but similar mood shila prabhupad was an unalloyed devotee of krishna and krishna never leaves their heart krishna says it described in brahma samhita premanjana churita bhakti vilochane na santah sadev hridayeshu vilokayanti yam sham sundaram achinta guna swarupam govindamadi purusham tamaham bhajami the supreme personality of god has in the form of sham sundar always resides in the heart of these unalloyed devotees whose eyes are tainted with the salve of love always he recites and prabhu even if there is a heart stroke from the autobiographical accounts we understand that even though prabhupad was going through these heart strokes he was seeing krishna krishna never left there are so many instances from the accounts we can hear that krishna would be personally present with shila prabhupad so that's what we can understand from the lives of pure devotees now coming back to the again to the demigods what really happened here some terminologies that are used and they may be incorrect so please forgive me if i'm saying something wrong sakama bhaktas the nature of the demigods is those who approach the supreme lord when there is a need and when their need is fulfilled they sort of withdraw into their own world their own activities you you'll find it interesting to note that in this chapter the lord very quickly appears and disappears <coughs> in fact the words that are used by vishwanath chakravarti thakur and also some cases shil prabhupad appear disappear visible invisible while in the life of a pure devotee the lord never disappears he is always present as we heard from brahma samhita and we witness from the life of shila prabhupad but those who are sakama bhaktas who are seeking the shelter of the lord for a certain purpose to fulfill their desires the lord appears when they pray when they seek the shelter and when such people start looking at other shelters in the form of opulence strength and all that the world has to offer that same supreme personality of godhead becomes invisible we should not ever think that the lord goes away he's always present he simply becomes unmanifested to the eyes which are not tainted with love of godhead so what lesson can we draw from this we should not seek other shelters in the form of opulences that this world offers there is no point in verse number 55 which i mentioned that we like to come back to prabhupad says in the translation as the dangers of a dream cease when the dreamer awakens the illusions created by the jugglery of the demons were vanquished shila prabhupad often said this world our life is like a dream he used the word phantasmagoria it's like a dream he said our time in this material world is the dream like state much similar to what is being mentioned here so just like the demons were awakened the dream the demons were awakened from the state of dream by the presence of the supreme personality of godhead prabhupada encouraged all of us all of us we should shake ourselves out of this dream become true members of iskon and he called iskon international society for krishna consciousness 
words he very choicefully used krishna consciousness a society that offers us an opportunity to be 24 hours krishna conscious and by being 24 hours krishna conscious we can protect ourselves from the dream like state so i pray that all of us can overcome this dream and i pray your blessings that i can first myself overcome from this dream like state by taking true shelter of shrimad bhagavatam and chanting of the holy names of the lord hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare shila prabhu pad ki jai i like to request many many senior vaishnavas are here vaishnavis are here to please share some of your thoughts and comments on this section of bhagavatam yes please is there a mic that can be given Mataji, there are other devotees hearing on the internet, so if you can please speak on the mic. Hare Krishna, it was a very beautiful class just now. I'm truly blessed to have you here. And then, yeah, my uncle is here. Please, please forgive me for taking such a liberty to to command in such a you know in this congregation. Well, actually, this is a this is from my true experience life. How Krishna actually. I mean, giving his mercy to Krishna and to to Guru actually, and to Shila Prabhupada and all the senior Vaishnavas. I just like to quote few things, you know. I mean, in this chapter, like last week, we've been talking about this uh, astrology thing, karma, all this about demigods thing, Saturn, and all those things. Through my experience, I'm telling you, Shila Prabhupada clearly, clearly stated you know, in one of his classes that never ever take shelter of all this astrology. all this you know certain things you know because i remember reading it you know because one there is one astrology guy he was telling one devotee went to him you know what he say he say devotee should not come to me because they get the direct mercy from krishna from guru they will get it you know because i one more thing because i don't want to offend the mataji she was giving class the other day she's counte a prabhu's wife well actually the moment you sit in this yasasan we should be actually propagating krishna consciousness yuga dharma you got that much so we should not claim ourselves as astrologer that is very wrong because we are empowered I mean I'm, I'm not empowered shila proper actually he actually my god he did he, he did such a tremendous work for all of us his devotees to follow his footsteps acharya's teaching that is sufficient enough don't take shelter of all these demigods all these astrologers they are no use because I remember in one class way back in 1970, this one, 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 one Western disciple was asking, "Shila Prabhupada, just one thing, Prabhupada, answer very, very quickly." It's like this: the disciple was asking, you know, Prabhupada, how to surrender? How to actually take away all my sins? Prabhupada say, "Just one minute." You know what is that? Sarva Dharma Parijaccha Mam Ekam Sarana Parijaccha Ham Tom Sarva Papebio Moksha Shishami Masucha. Just surrender. Surrender to the lotus feet, and also surrender to the lotus feet of your guru, Krishna Acharya. I mean the parampara, who actually connecting you to straight to Krishna, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He came to the world to deliver the love of God. We have all the nectar here. One more thing, through my experience, you know, when I leave Mayapur 16 years back, all the saintly Rupa Manjaris, for example, Pangjangni Prabhu, all the senior disciples, all the sannyasis, you know, when I leave Mayapur 16 years back. I got the blessings from Pankajangni Prabhu. He gave the garland, Maha garland of Nityananda Prabhu. When I leave Mayapur, I got it. And one more Maha, I got it from 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 Bhakti Vidya Purna Maharaj. His garland, I got it. And the moment I left Mayapur, I was preaching alone, practicing Krishna consciousness. Yeah, I go to temple sometimes, but I have very good connections with some yasis. Mataji, Shilapur, can you be a little bit yes, brief yeah, yeah, yeah. so that that's other it, devotees? That's, that's can. What I'm trying to say is. Take shelter of senior Vaishnavas here in the Holy Dam. 
go and seek for the advice they will guide you nicely what to do because you know what they say in my life they say certain starting this year for me seven years i was laughing come on thank you i'm in the shelter so of krishna so we should all take shelter of guru sadhu and shastra thank you so much thank you i am very happy to be krishna conscious and i want everybody to be krishna conscious 100% not like you know it's like no 100% means thank you so much for sharing this this bother me because i i i i mean i have i mean i would you allow me to come back so that i can ask other devotees for their comments sure just one more sure just one second while you look for it i'll take some other comments from other senior vaishnavas prabhus pankajangri prabhu jarnivas prabhu rajendra nandan prabhu if anything you like to share on this are there any yes please thank you very much i love the point that you made that uh, the lord may be invisible but he's always present with everyone what to speak of his unalloyed devotees for mixed devotees he may come and give his mercy in the form of chump change or some temporary benefit but for his real true devotees he is always there for them yes. thank you for sharing that thank you so much prabhu are there any questions we'll just take one question before it strikes time any other questions hari leela prabhu Prabhu, keep it a, a very easy one because coming from you, I am just <coughs> I'm little worried already. <laughs> But anyways, thankfully there are other Vaishnavas here. So, <coughs> thank you for a very nice class. Uh, I mean, it was really enlightening class. Uh, I heard a lot of things which is very relevant for me, especially the battle within and how to overcome the battle within. uh on this context uh, my question is that uh, especially being in managerial situations and when we have to take decisions which are sometimes pleasant sometimes not so pleasant how do we how do we continuously seek shelter of uh, bhagavatam and how can we be sure that sometimes i am never sure what i am doing is right or wrong you know how can we be sure or what can we do me too even i am not sure <laughs> prabhu what i felt is that if you're in a managerial position and i like to give the example of amrish maharaj expert manager i think if you're in a managerial position it means we have to take extra shelter which means we have to take additional more and more shelter like it is described in the life of amrish maharaj expert administrator but he was always surrounded by devotees who were chanting bhagavatam and chanting the glories of the lord the situation we face because of limitation of time because of our responsibilities we are able to give less and less time to bhagavatam because our responsibilities increase but like prabhupad said he said once somebody was sleeping and they said they did not prabhupad said sleep less but chant your rounds so for managers we have to do everything else less but increase bhagavatam because we need the shelter of bhagavatam even much much more because the problems we'll encounter will be immense so that's what that's the only response i have to take if you're spending one year and normally if you're doing management you have to spend 8 hours sorry one hour if doing management you have to spend 8 hours of studying bhagavatam <laughs> just to make sure we're taking the right direction well i like to it's 9 o'clock so we will stop as soon as you chant the shloka please and after that we will close Oh my 
my God, look at that, Vaishnava, you know, you just go to them. You don't have to go to the demigods. True. So beautifully explained. Very beautifully explained. And on that note, Srimad Bhagavatam ki, Srila Prabhupada ki, Hare Krishna.